Hello and welcome to a brief tutorial on how to create a video wall using pictures to EXE. Actually it's a very simple procedure. It can become complex if you use a lot of video displays in your wall. However for the purpose of this explanation I'm going to use a matrix of 3 by 3 uh, or a total of 9 different displays. In the demo I did I used a matrix of 12 by 8 with 96 independent different videos playing simultaneously and you can get as creative and uh, as large as you want with this but for the purpose of this tutorial we'll keep it down to a small size to show you how it's done and the basic principles that you learn here will be carried on to regardless of how many uh, single displays that you want to put in your video wall. Once you have the video wall c created you can also use it to create a video room and I will be showing you how to do that in another tutorial. So first I've opened pictures to EXE I've gone into the project options and I've set things up so that we have a 16 to 9 aspect ratio that is what I'm using for this demonstration you don't have to have that on your own you can set it like you like so first thing we'll do is right click down here and we're going to add an, a blank slide. So we're inserting a blank slide and we want this slide to be white which I'll explain a little later you'll understand why so the first thing let's do is let's go and click on customize slide button and then let's click on use own background preference on the main tab then click on solid color and we'll go in here and we're going to choose white and we want 255 255 check the RGB values they're good we'll say OK and then say OK again and next we'll go over to objects and animations in order to facilitate placing your videos what we want to do is simply put the or make use of the grid feature and right up here at the top of your screen you'll see a little grid icon which actually happens to be exactly what we're going to do a 3 by 3 matrix we click on this and I've already set it up for 3 by 3 and you want to go into the, uh, the little right arrow here and click on that make sure in pixels is not checked and you can leave snap to grid on or off that doesn't really matter for this purpose adjust your offset if you need to so that it exactly encompasses the size of your screen and then we can close that out and so we're ready to begin adding videos <clears throat> so assuming you've already created your little videos and I would suggest you make FLVs and make make them very small there's no need for a large highly detailed video to add to these tiny screens so we're going to right click over here and I'm going to add a video and I have already chosen two videos and I've put them over here I'm only going to use two for the example and so I'm going to go pick those up okay taking a little dance video from <clears throat> Jennifer Lopez here and the first thing we're going to need to do with this is to go to the properties tab and I'm going to turn the audio off mute the audio and then I'm going to um, go in and change the start time so we can actually see it. It starts as a blank, and that's the reason we're seeing nothing right now. Put about 59 seconds in here. Let's get my numbers right there. <clears throat> okay. Now at the present time, this video is um, is simply filling the entire screen but we don't want to do that with it we want to put it in one of these little segments so we'll size it and then simply move it over here and since I'm going to be using the same little videos I'm going to duplicate it so I'm going to uh, click on it to select it right click and say copy click outside the area and use the control V in pictures to EXE deselect control V deselect control V now I have four of the same video 
So I'm just going to click on, they're overlying one another. I'm going to click on it and move them over. Just put them in different places here. Actually, in this case, you would be doing this with your own videos, and you would probably be putting in um, a different video for each one of these little uh, divisions. <clears throat> so I'm going to add a different video now. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mute the audio and come over here and change the start time so we can actually see the thing. There we go. I'm going to size it. Place it in our little block. Now let's duplicate it. So we'll copy and paste it. You won't be doing this because you'll be doing different videos. But for the purpose of this explanation, I want to go ahead and, uh, and duplicate this four times. Okay. And I've muted it, so I'm going to move the originals. Looks like I need one more copy of it. Click outside to deselect and control V again. And there we have it. Now, if we do a preview, we have a little video wall build already. And you notice that these divisions are not perfect, and that's fine. Because we're going to add a little grid work in here. So I'm going to go back <clears throat> into our screen here. And I'm going to turn the grid work off. Let's leave the grid work on. We need it in the background. Now what you would do at this time, if you've built a rather large video screen or video wall, then you would save this work in PTE and then export this as an MP4. Then you would open PTE up again and start a new project, add your video wall to that project, and then turn the grid back on as we have here. And I'm just going to continue on with this. So I'm going to, this is what you'll do. You'll right click and you're going to add a rectangle. And we want this rectangle to be black and we want it to be a solid color. So we want to change in the properties tab the vertical gradient to a solid and we want to change the color to black. And I've done that. But we have one big rectangle covering the entire screen. So what we want to do is we want to click on it and go to animation. Then we want to go down here to the zoom and the default, you see this little icon between the two zoom values. It looks like a window. We want to click on it and make it look like a button. And once it looks like a button, we have divided the X and Y axes up so that we can deal with them independently. And so now we're simply going to click on the little down arrow here and we're going to squeeze as you can see here, we're going to squeeze this down until we have a little divider made. About like that. That's a, a two in size. And then we can go up here to the pan and we can move it back and forth. So let's move it over and center it over one of these little blue grid screens. And you can see minus 33 and minus 34. So it's greater than minus 33 and less than minus 34. So let's make it 33 minus 33.5 here. We're just micro justifying. And there it's centered up nicely. Okay. Now that we have one, let's click on it. Right click and copy it. And then click outside to deselect. Use control V to paste it because we need how many? One, two, three three more. So control V once, deselect, control V twice, deselect, 
control V three times. Now they're all lying right on top of one another, so all we need to do is to go to the pan here and move them one at a time. So let's move this one over to the far left. We don't need to center this one, just need to get it about in the place. It's going to become a left border of your black uh, dividers. So now we need to click on the next little rectangle down here and we need to pan it to the right and we need to center it up on this little blue grid line and that's centered nicely we don't have to do any more click on the next one and move it to the far right <clears throat> the one at the bottom of the four rectangles is the one that we started with so it's already in there so we're just moving this one over And there we go. Actually, it looks pretty good right there. So now we have the vertical dividers. Let's make the horizontal dividers. So we click outside here to deselect. And then we want to add. Let's get this deselected. Add another rectangle. And we want to go back and do the same thing in the properties tab. Change it from vertical gradient for the fill mode to solid. Change the color to black. Click on OK. And now <clears throat> it's still highlighted. Let's go back to animation. And remember we have a button here rather than a window. But this time we're dealing with the other axis. So let's go over here and let's squish it down so we have a horizontal line. It's about three. Three seems to be a good value for that. So now we'll go back up here to the pan and we'll move it. Let's just put it right there and it fits nicely. So let's duplicate it. Let's click on it. Right click on our mouse. Say copy. Click outside to deselect. And do control V how many times? Same number of times. Three more. And then deselect. Control V, deselect, Control V. And so now we've copied and pasted them on top of one another. So we need to adjust the, uh, the, the pan value here to move one of them up. Okay, let's select another one. And let's move it down. And select the last one and move it all the way to the bottom. I suggest you do move them like I'm doing rather than trying to, to grab them and <clears throat> visually mechanically move them with it with the mouse. It's much better to do it this way, it's more precise. Okay, let's see what we have now. Let's turn the grid off. <clears throat> and by turning the grid off with the white we see that our top one needs a little adjusting. So let's go back. Let's click on that top one. And let's move it up just a tiny bit. Moved it the wrong one. Let's move it up just a little bit. There we go. Take the grid off and look again. <clears throat> it looks pretty good. Now let's preview. We have a very nice <clears throat> little video wall, but we can see over here on the right that we need to move that last border so I'm going to hit escape I'm going to click on this and I'm going to move this one over just a tiny bit to the right and we'll try preview again and there we have build a video wall of course you will use separate videos in each one but that's essentially how you go about building the video wall.